Hello friends, this is the Science Chef again. Today we are learning about electric potentials, the first part of our series on electrochemistry. Please go nowhere and we'll be right back after this timeout. Electrochemistry is obtained from two words, electro meaning electron flow or current and chemistry which is the study of matter and the changes that matter undergoes. Therefore, electrochemistry is the field of chemistry that deals with the interrelation of electrical and chemical changes caused by the passage of current. It is divided into two areas, namely chemical changes that produce electricity like in a battery and processes that use electricity to bring about chemical changes like electrolysis. To learn more about electrolysis, check the link in the description. Electropotential is the tendency for an electrode to lose or gain electrons when dipped in a solution of its ions. It can also be defined as the potential difference set up between an electrode and a solution of its ions. When measured as standard conditions of one atmospheric pressure, 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin, and one molar concentration, it is called the standard electropotential. Its values for a given element can either be positive or negative, depending on whether it is an oxidation potential or a reduction potential. One is the additive inverse or negative value of the other. Ever wonder what happens when a zinc rod is dipped in a solution of a zinc salt such as zinc sulfate or zinc nitrate? Not really. Okay, let's analyze it together. The zinc rod is made up of zinc atoms while the zinc sulfate solution contains the zinc and sulfate ions. The zinc atoms in the rod spontaneously undergo oxidation by losing two electrons each to form zinc ions, which go into the solution to increase the concentration of the positive ions, thereby making the electrolyte electrically positive. Meanwhile, the electrons lost by the atoms are left on the surface of the metal rod, making the electrode electrically negative. Hence, a potential difference is established between the zinc electrode and the zinc ions electrolyte. You may need to watch our tutorial on the terms and mechanisms of electrolysis to understand the meaning of electrodes and electrolytes. Also, when a copper rod is dipped in a solution of copper 2 sulfate, the copper 2 ions in the solution spontaneously undergo reduction by gaining two electrons each from the copper rod and become deposited as copper atoms on the surface of the metal, making the electrolyte electrically negative. The loss of the electrons makes the electrode electrons deficient and therefore electrically positive. So a potential difference is also said to be established between the copper electrode and its electrolyte. The zinc electrode lost electrons to its electrolyte because the zinc atoms require less energy to lose electrons than is needed by the zinc ions to gain electrons. While the copper 2 ions gained electrons from their electrode because less energy is required by the ions to gain electrons than the copper atoms to lose their electrons. The setup involving the metal electrodes and the solutions of their ions is called a metal ions metal system or a half cell. So for the zinc electrode, it is a zinc ions zinc metal system or half cell and for the copper electrode, it is a copper 2 ions copper metal system or half cell. Let's see how to measure the standard electrode potential of a metal. If we connect the zinc half cell under standard conditions to a standard hydrogen electrode used for measuring the standard electrode potentials of elements and has an arbitrary value of 0.00 volts, electrons will flow from the zinc electrode to the hydrogen electrode and the reading on the voltmeter will be minus 0.76 volts. This value, which is the reduction potential of the zinc electrode, implies that zinc has the potential of losing electrons to hydrogen ions because it is more electropositive than hydrogen in the electrochemical series. In other words, zinc has the ability to reduce hydrogen ions. Also, the negative sign confirms that electrons flow from the zinc electrode to the hydrogen electrode, thereby making the zinc half cell the anode and the negatively charged electrode. Similarly, 
if the copper half cell is connected to the standard hydrogen electrode under standard conditions, electrons will flow from the hydrogen electrode to the copper half cell and the reading on the voltmeter will be plus 0.34 volts. This value being the reduction potential of the copper electrode means that copper cannot reduce hydrogen ions. Rather, copper 2 ions can be readily reduced by hydrogen gas because it is less electropositive than hydrogen in the electrochemical series. The positive sign shows that electrons flow from the hydrogen electrode to the copper half cell, thereby making the latter the cathode and the hydrogen electrode the anode. Note that the higher the negative value of the reduction potential of an electrode, the more electropositive it is, and the higher the positive value of the reduction potential, the less electropositive the electrode is. Conversely, the higher the negative value of the oxidation potential of an electrode, the more electronegative the element is, and the higher the positive value of the oxidation potential, the less electronegative the element is. Can you tell what will happen if the zinc and copper half cells are connected to each other by a piece of wire and separated by a porous partition? It is very simple. The zinc half cell will lose electrons to the copper half cell. The electrons will be lost by the zinc atoms in the zinc electrode and will be gained by the copper 2 ions in the copper 2 electrolyte. This flow of electrons, which is current, does some work like lighting a bulb or powering a transistor radio or a toyka and is detected by a galvanometer. Since electrons are lost from the zinc half cell, it is said to be the anode because it is where oxidation occurs, while the copper half cell is the cathode because it is where reduction occurs. Don't forget that electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. If we combine the two half cell reactions and net off the number of moles of electrons transferred, we will obtain the overall cell reaction, which means that zinc metal undergoes oxidation to form zinc ions, while copper 2 ion undergoes reduction to form metallic copper. So we can say that zinc is a reducing agent because it is oxidized, while copper 2 ion is the oxidizing agent because it is reduced. You may need to watch a tutorial on introduction to redox reactions for a better understanding of the concept of oxidation reduction reactions. Check the link in the description. If the connections are reversed by making the copper half cell the anode and the zinc half cell the cathode, electrons will cease to flow. This is because electrons cannot flow from a less reactive or electropositive element to a more reactive or electropositive element. Since copper is less reactive than zinc, it cannot reduce zinc ions, therefore it cannot act as the anode. This setup, which involves the combination of two half cells and a porous partition or a salt bridge, is called an electrochemical cell. We will learn more about electrochemical cells in our subsequent tutorials. It is important to note that the difference in the electropotentials of the two half cells is the potential difference of the overall cell or the electromotive force that is EMF of the cell. The EMF of a cell is the driving force behind the cell which enables it to do work. It is calculated by using the formula E cathode minus E anode or E reduction minus E oxidation. Our next tutorial will be on calculations on electropotential, the second part of our series on electrochemistry. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell to keep a date.